Hey man, it's me, Kevin Smith. Welcome to the Grow Tent, everybody. You have found the best one channel on YouTube, man. The place where we simplify the approach for you so everyone can learn how to grow. We make it so simple, even I can understand. So I'm going to listen and learn right now. What's going on, everybody? We got a great episode for you today. Today, we're going over some of my tips and tricks to make you a better gardener and to make your life more, more simple. I don't know if it's two more, but it definitely will help you improve. Uh, you know those little touches that you might be missing to uh, simplify your day in your life of gardening. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome all my new members and say hello to all of my old members. Thank you very much. I appreciate the sub. And if you guys haven't subbed yet, remember to hit that subscribe button right down there. Maybe like the video. Helps out the channel a ton since YouTube definitely doesn't. Uh, also, guys, remember to check out my Patreon. The link is in the video description below. Uh, YouTube does not support uh can of content creators so any and everything you can do to help is much much appreciated uh what else oh let's roll this uh ad for mars hydro and we'll be back in a minute Woo! what's up guys if you're looking for any kind of new light new tent exhaust fans filters anything of the sorts make sure you check out mars hydro they have been the main sponsor of the channel since we hit 500 subscribers and as you can see, we have a lot more than that now. Uh, if you would like an extra discount at checkout, make sure you use the code WTTGT. It doesn't matter if you do capital letters, lowercase letters, whichever. Any of them will work. But you have to use the link in the video description below. And then put in the code at checkout. And it will give you a nice discount at checkout. Who doesn't want an extra discount? And remember, guys, no matter what size tent you have or area you have to cover, Mars Hydro makes a light that will work for you with some of the best LEDs and diodes and drivers and ballast on the market. You can pick up one of these lights to cover exactly what you need and exactly where you need it at an economical cost. Use the code below. Woo! Woo! What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Grow Tent. we got a fantastic episode for you today because you guys picked it. Uh, you guys have designed the episode for today. So today we're going over questions that I get in my uh, comment section on YouTube. As you guys all know, if you leave questions in the YouTube comments, uh, every once in a while we go through and we answer them. So we're going to be doing that today. Whoa. All right. Kids are yelling. It's good morning. All right. So uh, thank you everybody for tuning in, liking, subscribing, all that kind of cool stuff. I appreciate it. So first question, we're just going to get right to it after that intro. Uh, first question, uh, is autos. Uh, do you do the light and the food the same as you do with a photo? And the answer is no, I do not. So first we'll, that's like a two part question. So first we're going to, we'll tackle light and then we'll tackle food. Uh, so with autos versus photos and lights, they actually do run on different uh, lighting schedules. That's what makes an auto an auto and a photo a photo. So with the light schedule for an auto, for the first week I have it on, uh, or for the first I don't know, week and a half, weekish, somewhere around there, I keep the light on 24 hours a day. And then after the plants have kind of got established themselves, out of the ground, I'd switch it to 18.6 for the entire rest of the time the plant's alive. So the next couple of weeks of veg, and then it's gonna flip itself into flower, and then you know it'll run its course through flower. So I actually keep it 18.6 after the first week, and then 24 hours a day for the first for the for that first week, and then it's 18.6 after that. Uh, for the photo period that runs different, for the photo periods that first four weeks is seedling stage, so they get 24 hours of light for the first four weeks. Uh, after the first four weeks, they're going to enter their vegetative state of growth. So I will switch the light schedule from 24 hours on with zero off time to 18 hours on with six hours off. And that's what the light schedule will stay for the entire time you keep them in veg. Because since it's a photo, it will stay in veg as long as you want it to stay in veg. You, you get to control all that. So if I want to keep it in veg for three weeks, then it'll stay in veg for three weeks. If I want to keep it in veg for three months then I will keep it in veg for three months. I just keep the light at 18.6 and it will stay in veg perpetually forever. You, if you had mother plants, you just keep it in 18.6 and it will stay in vegetative state forever. You can do it for years. Well, you won't be able to do it for years because the plant's gonna get too big. But you, you understand what I mean. 
And then whenever I'm ready to go to flower, I've got my plant to the right shape and size. Then I choose when we will be going to flower and I'll be like, all right, we've been in veg for six weeks. Let's go to flower. So then I will switch the light schedule to 12, 12. And that was, yeah, the autos is a, I mean, it's not much turning on the timer to a different time, but the autos do make it a little bit easier on the timer because you don't have to, you don't mess with it really. It just stays the same after the first week, just 18, six. Uh, they're going to cost you. It's going to cost you in other areas by running autos, but for that, not a big deal. Uh, and then the next part was the food. Do you feed the plant the same? And once again, we're at a no. But as you know, we don't feed our plants very much. Uh, doing the method of growing that I do, I generally only feed my plants two-ish times if I'm on a normal cycle where I'm not keeping them in veg forever. Uh, you know, I only feed the plants two-ish times per grow their entire life, usually week four and week six of flower, and then it's done. I just let them eat the soil because we grow in pre-amended soil uh, here. But with the food, if I'm going to feed, um, let's say I was going to feed 500 ppms to my photo period plant, I generally cut the food in half if I'm going to be feeding it to an auto. So if I was going to feed 500 ppms to a photo, and then I would feed 250 ppms to the auto. So generally I just reduce it by 50%. And you always find that it's way easier to start off low and kind of sneak up on it than to add too much and then your plant hates you and gets all burnt up and you cost yourself yield. So generally I give the autos half what I would have given the, the more robust uh, photo period plants. Uh, next question. I am on a super tight budget. What is the first piece of equipment I should buy? Those are gunshots. Oh, where the hell am I at? Holy cow. Am I shooting a gun outside? That's crazy. That's like 10 shots. Um... I should probably go check that out. I'll be right back. All right, that's crazy. I heard like 10 gunshots go off, and it didn't sound like it was like super, super far away. So I don't know. I do live next to a giant field, so maybe somebody was shooting at something. So crazy. All right, so question was, but I'm on an extremely tight budget. What's the first piece of equipment you would buy? Um, the first piece of equipment I would buy is probably a little Mondi Dome or Sprouter Kit, and you can get those for like, 40 to $60, depending on where you, uh, where you get them. And for your first four weeks, your plant is going to live in there anyway. So you actually have, would have a month of in that little substructure and small area and they're not very expensive. So you could take care of that. Now uh, you could actually skip the tent completely. Uh, so you could save yourself money there and just like transfer transition, like a bathroom that you don't use or a closet that you don't use. And you can make that your grow tent. Um, you don't actually need the tent material. It's just, you know, it makes a nice little box for you to grow in. But you can bathrooms, uh, parts of your basement that you do not use, uh, anything like that. You can actually just get some, like, black poly and make walls and stuff like that really cheaply. Or 55-gallon trash bags. I've seen people cut them apart and make curtains out of them and make their own little framed thing with that wrapping so I mean that would work too your biggest expense if you're on extreme budget is always going to be your light but at the same time there's some really cheap lights on like Amazon and stuff like that uh, I can't say the names of them because I'm under contract so I can't advertise for different places but you can find lights on Amazon that are extremely cheap and they can get you by, you know what I mean? Because the plant doesn't care what brand is on the light. I know I'm going to get yelled at from the sponsor for saying that, but the, the plant doesn't care. And if you're on a, such a tight budget where you can't afford the, you know, the, the, the decent lights, you can get lights that can get you by for now. Because if you can't barely afford this, you definitely can't afford to go to the freaking dispensary and pay their prices. So there's a bunch of cheap lights that you can get. So I, my first purchase would be the little... Like the Mondi Dome kit because it has a little two foot T5 and it'll take care of you for your first month. And over that course of that month, I mean, you can find like 50, 60, 80 dollar lights and then you can just transform one of your closets or bathrooms. So then you don't have the money for the tent 
or anything like that. And if you do it in a bathroom, they actually already have exhaust fans generally built into them. So that can be, you can save money on your exhaust fan and filter there and just turn that on and let it get sucked out of the room <laughs> and up into your attic. So that would probably be my first piece of equipment. And then I would follow that up with buying my light because that's what they're going to go into. And I would probably run plastic pots instead of fabrics because they last longer and you can buy them one time and they don't ever really break down on you like the fabrics eventually will. Um, so I'd probably just grow in plastic pots so I could the reusability of it. Uh, and then, yeah, I think that, I don't think it's adequate answer to that. Um, how many bags of soil to fill a five gallon pot? Um, well, I mean, you'd probably get, I, I don't know, I buy my bags like three at a time and I dump them into one big thing. So I kind of, kind of throws my view off. And plus it would depend on what size your bags were. Cause if you like look at the, the Fox farm or what size bags you buy. Cause if you look like ocean forest, it comes in a smaller bag than like happy frog and they come in all different size bags. So it's hard to answer that question. Cause I don't know what size bag you're talking about. Cause they make the like the really big bags of soil. And then they make like a large bag, a medium bag, a small bag. So uh, it, it would vary. I can't really answer that one. Cause I, I don't know. I don't know what size bag you're buying of soil, so it's hard to answer that one. Uh, Botanicare Sweet. I don't understand which one to buy. There's berry, there's raw, there's, <laughs> yeah, it's all the same stuff. Those little stickers on the front, they don't, just if you buy the raw, which is just like plain, uh, or if you buy the mixed berry, I think it is, or they used to have grape, and now I think they have lemon. It's all the same stuff. The stickers on the front is just to appeal to different people's personality types uh there is zero they do it makes zero difference in like your terpene profile or the smell or anything like that it's just there to get you to grab that bottle because it's got different stickers on it so it appeals to different, different people's like senses it's a marketing thing zero difference in the outcome of your plant just i don't care if you get the plane just make sure it's getting the magnesium and the sulfur the sulfate it'll be fine uh next contest date we literally just finished the other one. We haven't even had the uh, we haven't even had the uh, the podcast yet, which is coming up probably the third week of February. I've been talking to the contest winner Brian, and he's super excited. Uh, I already got him his channel sponsorship money to him. Uh, I have his belt all packed up, and I have not got to the post office because it was drop week. And uh, drop weeks on Patreon are always insane. I was working like seven days a week, getting all the stuff packaged up and sent out. And for some reason, you know, the, I need to take the belt to the office. That way, whenever I stop at the post office, I can drop it off too. So uh, next contest date, uh, I would probably say, I don't know, probably sometime towards the end of March would be my guess. So not next month, but probably the month after. Uh, okay, there's another, here's a good question. What, what do you do if you buy a light that is stronger or bigger than the tent that you bought it for? So I guess if like I had a two by four and I put a Mars Hydro SP 6500, uh, the difference between SP is like the single bar style, like it's all in one big like chunk. And then like the FCs are the ones where they've got the spread out bars that look like a big grid. So if let's say you had a two by four, instead of buying the SP300, which would be the correct light for a two by four, you bought the SP6500, which I have that light on a light mover in a six by four. So way bigger, you know, way, way more area to cover, but I can have one light cover the entire tent because I have it on a mover that will move the light back and forth. So I have a bigger light it's not really the right shape for the tent because it's set in a smaller frame. But now I have a light mover that will move that light so I can run the stronger light in the in the tent that it's not supposed to be in because it moves it back and forth so it's not sitting in one spot. Um, so putting it on a light mover is one way to do it. That way it, the light doesn't just sit in the same place and it will actually sit over here and then you'll see it'll move. It moves on a little robot. The little robot moves the light back and forth all day. Uh, but the easier way to do it is you just adjust how much uh, you turn the light up. Like if I took my SP6500 and put it in a 2x4, I wouldn't. But if I did, um, 
I would just never turn it up all the way because it would never need that strong of a light in that small of an area. So instead of turning it all the way up, like in my 5x5, this is a great example. In my 5x5, I have a FCE 8000. It is an extremely powerful light. It is made for really to be in like cultivation facilities. It's an extremely strong light. So I don't ever turn that light all the way up. I think the highest I've ever turned it up is 90%. And you guys have all seen my gardens. If you haven't, go back and check out some of my old videos. Tons of plants. Colas in every spot. Two foot deep canopy. Edge to edge. Front to back every time. So, except for on the seeded runs because then you don't get nearly I still get big colas but not as big uh, because the plants are caring about making seeds and not making bud um, but you just don't have to turn it up all the way because our our tendency as growers is to max everything out as fast as we can and we stop looking at the plant listening to the plant what's the plant want what's the plant tell me at once our as growers, we go, we have the tendency to be more is better. You know, the max we can give it means the max we get. It's not really the way it works with this plant. This plant is like a constant balancing act. And uh, too little is not good and too much is not good. It's like watering. Underwatering is not good. But overwatering on the other side of the spectrum is not good either. you got to find that happy medium. Uh, usually it's a little bit more tilted towards just over underwatering. It's where you'd want to be rather than... <laughs> under overwatering, um, so you have to kind of play that into effect is what is your plant asking for rather than I just turn the light all the way up if the plant isn't asking for more light then you don't give it more light because it's happy with the amount of light you're giving it if you're giving it too much light then you turn it down if you give it too much too little light then you turn it up and you do that by reading your plant reading the plant's leaves what it's asking for what you're seeing not based on just it don't put a stronger light in your tent than you need to if you already have it. Let's say that's just what you had. You just don't have to turn the light all the way up. You know, you control it. It's not like you're like, oh, I put this 10,000 par light in this 2 by 4 I got to turn it. Well, it's, you know, it's week six flower. Turn this bitch all the way up. That's not the way it works. Keep it down. Just adjust it for where your plants need it. You don't have to go to the 100% mark on the grow. Because if your plant is not asking for more light and you give it more light, you hurt your yield. You don't improve it by giving something that the plant is not asking for. If it's too much, it hurts the plant. Whether you're in a 2x4, a 5x5, a 4x8, it doesn't matter. I don't care. If you give them too much of something, it hurts them. It costs you yield. It stunts their growth, which costs you yield. I think it's a great spot to end. Uh, we're already at 11 minutes just on this section. So uh, I appreciate each and every one of you tuning in, listening, liking the videos, all that kind of stuff. It's much appreciated. Remember to check out the Patreon. Remember to check out the merch store. It does come with free stuff every order. So, all right, I'll see you guys. Oh, well, not every order. Any orders over $30 get free stuff. All right, see you guys next time. GT, out.